Hello and welcome to Back 40 Bushcraft. I, uh, I just had the camera all set up. I was like taking my helmet off, my glasses, explaining to you that I haven't had a video in a while and I figured I'd take a look at the side and sure enough it wasn't even recording. So here I am again. There it is. It took me like eight years. I've had this thing for eight years. It was never running. I found another one. My good old buddy Craig Randell down at the garage uh, was able to uh, take two lousy motors plus parts that I found off of eBay from all over the world and now it is running. Road legal. But I'm uh, today, I'm in the Bonington range. This is quite nice because we've got a little map here. I'll hold it steady, go ahead and pause it if you really want to have a closer look. And uh, I was out here last weekend and I went to this one lake out here called Barrett Lake. And uh, I got to tell you, it was some of like the most technical riding I think I've ever done. It was just like these big loose boulders pretty much for like... 500 meter stretches at a time and then there'd be a little decent section and then rocks so I actually ended up having to walk the last kilometer or half mile in kind of thing so uh, uh, but I got up there oh my god it was so beautiful it's actually uh, there's a snowmobiler's cabin up there so it's one of those places that I'm glad I've checked out I kind of understand how to get there and I'd love to just come out with uh, Tanner and the kids there at some point this winter. I think it would be pretty awesome. Today, I'm looking for Lost Lake. I've got uh, got my little Daiwa mini cast in there. I've got uh, a freshly waxed oil skin I'm going to sleep under. Uh, it's definitely going to be a little different. I'm going to likely have to walk further depending on how rough it is because I heard it is quite rough and if it's anything like Barrett Lake uh, yeah that was rough and so uh, plus I'm putting this extra big pack on my back which if you're riding trying to ride technical terrain on a dirt bike with a little weight that's kind of shifting your center of gravity all the way, yeah, that might prove a little challenging. So, um, this is the start of it. I hope I can even find it. And I uh, hope you're uh, excited to come along. I know I am. You always wear some kind of thing over your eyes. 
Well, there's my first hold up. Yeah, it's promised. Um, the extra weight on the backpack is not uh, is not a helpful situation. So I'm gonna. Uh, I know I can get up. It's just so awkward with the pack. So I'm just gonna. Uh, Come up here a little ways, drop the pack, and then uh, pick it up. Yeah, yeah, like right here. Good deal. Well, that didn't turn out very well. I, uh, it flooded because it fell over. I was trying to make it up, wouldn't start, so I had to turn around, kind of roll down through that without a motor, and then it really just wouldn't start for a while. And so by the time I got it started, I went past my camera and my backpack and everything. I'm glad I did because there was another Pretty rough little section, which I'm walking through right now. I'm gonna get up as, get everything together again. And then, just gonna take a little look at the map. See where I am. See if I should just walk. Or keep trying to ride. But hey. Here we are. That's the sound of Lost Creek, I believe. And uh, truth be told, I'm a bit nervous about this time of year. You know, I'm going up into the Alpines by myself. Well, not really Alpines, I guess. Uh, higher elevation. And I think the uh, bears is probably getting close to that time of year when they, uh, they start coming down looking for those huckleberries. And, uh, Thimbleberries, I guess. That's the little red ones here. You ever see any of these? There's an example. Of course, the uh, darker red one is the is the right one. Not a ton of flavor to them, but can survive, I suppose. Holy. Holy epic bales. <laughs> I hope that'll be okay. I, uh, I got tossed off the trail into the bush and then my pack just <laughs> threw me off. I look at turtle on my back. It bikes over on its side to see gas. I don't feel like this happens when I'm canoeing or hiking. Definitely, I'm definitely out there though. But I shouldn't really muck about. It's 10 to 3. I gotta walk back down to get my pack. I look like I might have hit a bit of a flat zone. So I guess I'm just kind of piggybacking bike and pack. Uh, why, Greg? Why would you do that? Well, where it is a uh, pretty technical uphill here, I still feel it'll be easier to roll down than, than walk. At least I'm basing that on the experience I had um, going to 
Barrett Lake last weekend. Super technical going uphill and I was really dreading the way down but it wasn't as bad as I'd thought and considering the amount of energy output I had going into that place. So tonight I'm, you know, I'm gonna spend the night, man. I should be rested and ready to go come morning time. Yeah, here I'll show you. I ended up having to like, whether you'll be able to tell, I was walking up beside the bike and because there's no weight, it's just shooting it all over the place. That's, the pack is still exactly where I left it when I was wobbling around. So I'm gonna get that loaded up and start heading back uphill again. It's time for a new plan. This time, I'm not even gonna bother trying. <laughs> Cause it's just, it's too much with the pack. So, I will just walk up there. I will come back down and then I will rip up on the bike like nobody's business. I'll try that this time. Well, I started walking up a little ways. A little ways there. And uh, I realized it, it was the hill to hell. Except if hell was going up. Uh, so I'm still climbing. I'm gonna show you my approximation of what level looks like. That's what level looks like. And that's what the downhill looks like. It's hard to really contextualize that through a camera. Uh, and then, it just keeps going. So you know what I did? I left the Honda. I didn't get too far up and I'm like, bah. looked at my map. I've got about two kilometers. So, you know, 1.6 kilometers is a mile for any of those that are uh, imperial. Um, so, I got my whistle out. I got my, my knife out. I got a uh, 30 year old pepper spray in the bag. Never been used, don't know if it works. It's just kind of there, at least, very least I could throw it at a bear as I'm running away or playing dead or whatever I'm supposed to do. Um, okay, my heart rate's eased somewhat. I'm glad you're still here. Um, I still have like uh, probably 1.9 kilometers to go. Um, so I better get going. Oh, it never ends. Piece of cake. Mark, take it easy, man. Yeah. <laughs> Safe drive out. <laughs> All right. A little mid afternoon entertainment, and away we go.
my uh, terrain has just changed from uh, kind of where the road drops away there, maybe a little bit further down. Looks like we're getting into more of uh, this uh, oxidized granite. I don't know. What do I look like, a paleontologist? Um, I can see light. I feel like I'm in a bit of a saddle. But according to the map, I'm still a ways away. I'm out of shape. Holy cow. Normally I might have already been playing some hockey. But, uh, alas, not yet. Um, so I did stop and grabbed um, carrot, cucumber, celery, drink of water. Just because I, uh, and then when I went to put my pack on, I got all like lightheaded. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, right. You gotta remember to kind of fuel yourself. Those guys in the truck down there, they said they were just like, the fish could not get on their hook quick enough. So, remains to be seen if it's a tall tail or not. I'm curious to find out, and I'm sure you are too. To me, this looks like a huckleberry rich bear right there. It's not that old. I mean, could have been here this morning. One day in the sun. Depends on how much the sun got here, I suppose. One, two days, anyways. I'm using my whistle a lot, making lots of noise, you know, let everybody know I'm around, just here to enjoy in their bounty, share it with you, the bounty, what the heck is this, now here's, uh, here's some support for, uh, when I thought about that bear scat back there, take a look at these, oh my god. That, my friends, oh they're just so, 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 so juicy right there. So juicy that I'm going to turn the camera on. Off. Use both hands for a minute before I have to go up that hill. Better get my sugar rush. Okay, so here's a funny thing. I had the camera like all set up. I got one of these tripods with the little flexible everything's. Had it all nicely wrapped up in a tree overlooking my walk into the lake. I finally make it to the lake. Yes, finally make it to the lake. And um, I set up my little walk in. You can see the lake in the background. Going through my files. It's not there. That video. So um, I, I felt it necessary for me to get a quick explanation in because it's just going to cut into this next scene. So there's a little here. I'm just gonna tie, just tie a little end knot. Just like that. So I can get it through the hole. I'm just going to stick a little stick in there, just like that, so it can't come out. <coughs> Alright, and then I've got some sticks to height, but I have, I just use a little hand saw to notch in there, and that's going to just kind of slip right in there. And there's 
just number one. My uh, uh, Katatku trading, I guess, out of Australia. It's kind of a neat, uh, neat poncho. It has the guy line, so you can use it. Has one in the middle, so I could put it in a pup tent version as well. If the rain got really, if there was some rain or whatever, I'm not anticipating any of that. And you know, we've got some really, we're, we're pretty extreme in where our fires are concerned right now, and where I might normally just kind of build a no see em fire that. Uh, uh, no one will even know I was here. Uh, I'm going to use the existing fire pit, although not as much of that I don't need. Um, just to use the infrastructure that's here and know that there's probably, it's never been shoveled out so that ash should protect from the ground underneath. I feel like so out of it. it took a lot longer to get up here than I anticipated so I'm just kind of walk around had a cliff bar I guess I'm getting some things done it's still daylight but I'd like to get out there and try casting off of the logs or something like that
It is going to be straight up noodles. I got a chill. I got a deep chill, and I think it's because all I've eaten since I left home is like a cliff bar. There's a bunch of dirt bike and hiking and elevation gain since then. So, I'm just going for the warmth and fluids. And I'm going to have a cup of tea. I can have a cup of tea here somewhere. Uh, yeah, licorice root. I work in a pinch. Too late for a coffee. And so the variety of tea I'm using is Yogi Tea. And Yogi Tea gives you a little uh, quote with every tea bag. And this one says, One touch of nature makes the whole world kin. William Shakespeare. How appropriate. My noodle and tea is ready. So I'm going to eat that. Drink that. And uh, see if I can get some fishing right after. Yeah. One of the perks of shooting those, these videos in the summer, I guess, is... Uh, you know, I haven't done that many in the winters, but boy, the darkness comes quick. Mm, I don't know what time it is. I I know the the sun is setting earlier all the time, but uh, um, oops. Uh, yeah. Nice to be done eating. Still a bit of light. I'm not gonna fish. I'm likely not gonna sit around the fire for too long. Uh, I'll bid you adieu. Oh, I forgot my toothbrush. Morning. Well, I had a pretty good sleep. Mm -hmm. No, been a bit hit and miss on these overnights. I know one time I just took like wool blankets, froze to death. Obviously, I came back to life. That was cold. Uh, another one. I was in a hammock. Oh, it was so cold. It was terrible. First one I did was... I had like this huge sleeping bag. That was crazy. I mean, I woke up a lot. All night long. My, I don't know what time it is or anything like that, but the sun has not hit me directly as yet. And I think I'll just keep kind of dozing in and out until that happens. Until it just gets to be too hot to live in the sleeping bag.
look at this. Look at what I'm waking up to. Isn't that spectacular? Feel pretty fortunate. Something I've been looking to improve on is uh, dating back to my uh, younger years of uh, going to Belize for the winters, you know, carrying fresh milk around with you everywhere just isn't, uh, isn't going to happen every time. So down in Belize, they have this uh, stuff called Klim. It's a full cream powder. It's actually milk, spelled backwards. And, uh, oh gosh, I've been trying and trying and trying to find myself some Klim. And I was not able to. But Nestle, on the other hand, there's a, a Mexi uh, version from Mexico called Nido, and so I, I bought a can of it. I honestly haven't used it as yet, but I'm going to see whether it's going to recreate those feelings I had from so long ago. Because I bought this other stuff. Oh, wow. Look at that. I bought this other stuff a while back, some farm that dehydrates their milk and everything, and neato. Um, oh, that's totally, totally, totally gonna work. But the stuff was so fine that uh, honestly, you just can't even. Uh, 
it just ends up being super, super clumpy. Boy, that dirty water I got there. Now I'm still using up the last of my instant coffee from God knows how long ago. But I think I do some nice big scoops like that. I'm going for the full cup this morning, you know. This is the thing. I'm still doing my intermittent fasting. It's been over six months now. It's worked out pretty well. I mean, I've lost like 25 pounds. I think overall my energy levels are higher. Oh, come on, Nito. Let's see what you're going to, what kind of magic you can show everybody here. <sighs> Oh my god, it looks like a real cup of coffee! <laughs> yeah. Fasting. 25 pounds. Uh, I definitely don't know that I could do it under different circumstances. I'm pretty lucky. I get to uh, work from home. It's a, it's a desk job, kind of for the most part. Oi, crikey, that's hot. Um, and so it's pretty easy for me to wait until like one in the afternoon. But, um, you know, I think it would, it would, do me better to get some exercise in between. Because I'll tell you, I'm feeling pretty achy just from that hike yesterday. I'm not a spring chicken anymore. Um, I'm going to drink my coffee and then I'm going to show you the Daiwa mini cast. Let's see if I can catch some fish this morning. Okay, well, I got my coffee done, I guess now it's... Jeez, look at my... God, backpack's uh, rubbing some of its colors off. Um, here it is. The Daiwa Minicast System. Look at this little beauty. Now, I bought the case and rod couple of years ago it didn't have a reel until recently I found when I've been kind of keeping my eye on it on every now and again I'd go to eBay and see and the ones that they would have were just like such junkers really a, I, I think it's a bit of a rare uh, little setup but <clears throat> lo and behold let me show you this it's just got the most, the cutest little reel. Look at that thing. Fits in the palm of your hand. It's like a baby squirrel. Well, you see, I don't know if I jinxed myself on the very first cast. I caught, oh gosh, just this small little one. Sadly, it, uh, it bit the hook so hard I had to keep it. It wasn't really, it wasn't really the intention. I'll uh, definitely cook that one up. <clears throat> I won't let it go to waste.
drought I've had all day. Mm. I cut the slices into the skin. And let it sit in coarse salt. You saw me pour the coarse salt. And then just slowly cook it over the fire and then try and get a bit of smoke. And then once you're uh, once you're set to eating it, it's almost just like smoked fish. Salty skin. I'll tell you. I think I've might have suffered a bit of heat exhaustion yesterday. I feel like still pretty lightheaded. That's the first thing I've had today, I suppose. Um, so it's going to be an interesting hike out. I'm going to take my time, but with that, I'm going to, it's a 20, 20 to 12. I'm going to go uh, bathroom, get loaded up, and then let's start hiking out. I may have to take my time. Now I suppose I need to uh, clarify. There are two differences in some of the approaches we have to some of the places we go to here in uh, British Columbia. We have places like Valhalla Provincial Park where it's, uh, it's a provincial park so there's no automobiles or anything like that. Beautiful, beautiful ranges to hike into, mountains to hike into. Uh, but you can't bring a dog. Uh, and then the flip side is me coming up this way, which is an old uh, road, I guess, essentially. And the difference is we have high clearance vehicles, as you can see, that might come up and be like, yeah, mud bog section, or go through there. And you saw the truck going, and sure enough, there were some crushed beer cans out there and that's just embarrassing to whoever doesn't know to just pack that stuff out but the difference is the big the bigger difference is these sites are just much less visited and I know if I were to have gone hiking to say Gwillem Lakes um, there'd probably be a a dozen people up there on the weekend, especially when it's nice like this. Whereas it was just me and breakfast, and that was a good fish. So uh, I'm gonna save my energy. I've got the, a big uphill before I get to the top, and then it's uh, it's all downhill from there, baby. Yeah. Okay, I think this is the final stretch here, down to the bike, if I recall, just past uh, that spot where I saw the Toyota pickup. So here I am, all shaky-legged, <laughs> ready for the next portion of the journey home. Um, yeah. Next, next stop is the Honda. Oh, met a couple of couples hiking together, sussing out their ski touring route for this coming winter. Apparently, gotta hand it to them. It's pretty sweet to be able to get back out there in the winter. Uh, kind of need my wits about me on this last little stretch, but uh, see you at the Honda.
Hey, this is the end of the line. The Honda is running. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I may get another little bit in here, but if I don't, uh, hit the like button if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't. Comments, questions? Come on. Put a comment down there. Let me see if I could... You could... Communicate. You know, I love communicating. Uh, back 40 Bushcraft. Until next time. Thanks. Whoops, sorry about that. Thanks for joining.